Sula Rahman. Today we will discuss about variation. What is variation? Variation means the changing in any value that we are going to discuss, uh, like uh, proportion, like ratio. So, <clears throat> there are two types of variation. First is direct variation. <coughs> direct variation. And second is inverse variation. Direct variation means directly proportional. The symbol is just like this. In direct variation, we can say that if two quantities are so related that the change in one quantity, I mean to say, increment, increase in one quantity causes increase in another quantity. That is called the direct variation or directly proportional. You have already knowledge about what is directly proportional. So there are so many examples within time that if we are if we are uh, making x to accelerate the car more and more, the speed will increase according to that acceleration. So also there are much more many examples according to directly proportional. If x and y are two quantities and they have the relation directly proportional, then we can write it as x directly proportional to y. Or we can write it as x is equal to k y, where k is some constant. <coughs> according to which the value changes in increment or in decrement level. Another thing is inverse variation. Inverse variation is just like inversely proportional. Inversely proportional means if two quantities are so related that increment in one quantity causes decrement in other quantity, then it is called, this relation is called inverse variation or inversely proportional. For x and y, inversely proportional, the relation between x and y will be just like this. So also we can write it as, x is equal to k divided by y, and that's it. This is the final relation that relates x to y, and this is the final relation that relates x to y. So talking about exercise 3.2, which is totally relevant to direct variation and inverse variation, Question number one is if y varies directly as x, mean to say if y is directly proportional to x and y is equal to k and x is equal to 2, then find the three items. First is y in terms of x of x. Second is find the value of y when x is equal to 5. And the third is 
find the value of x when y is equal to 28. We have the relation y is directly proportional to x. <coughs> so for this relation y directly proportional to x, we can make the relation between y and x that is y is equal to ax. This is equation number one. So first we need to find the value of k. We have the y and the x value that is given y is equal to a, k and x is equal to 2. Now we can easily find the value of k who is multiplied and who is going to divide on the other side we will divide it by 2 to 2 to 3 to 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 so the value of k that is equal to 4 there is the value of k now talking about first part find y in terms of x how is the y related to x with how much time so by using question number one, y in terms of x will be from equation number one, y is equal to kx. Just you need to put the value of k for you. Put the value of k. The value of k is 4. This is the relation between y and x. You can say that y is equal to 4 times of x. This was the first part. The second part is you need to find the value of y. When x is equal to 5. Again, this question can be solved. From this equation, y is equal to kx. You need to find the value of y, just put the value of k and x. The value of k is we have already 4, and the value of x is given by 4, 5, and 20. The last part from this relation is you need to find the value of x when y is given. <coughs> y is equal to 28 and x you need to find it so y is equal to kx again from this relation y now you can easily find the value of x y is equal to 28 the value of k is 4 and x 4 is multiplying and we are going to divide on this side of directly you can choose this one of the four. 4, 7, that's what we did. Then you will have easily the value of x. x is equal to 7. And that's it. This was the question number 1, and these are very easy questions. <coughs> very very good. Directly proportional or inversely proportional. Question number one and question number two is again just like question number one. We are going to solve question number three. Question number one and question number two both are same questions, same criteria. Question number three is again like that if R is directly proportional. And R is equal to 5. And P is equal to B. So just only this part of the question, we can easily find the value of K. For example, R is directly proportional to P. We can write this thing as R is equal to k and b. This is equation number one. Now we need the value of k. 
So put the uh, values of R and D. The value of R is 5, K is K, and D is K. 8 will be to divide here. So the value of K is 5 by K. This was only the value of K. Now, Find the equation connecting R and D. The first thing is equation connecting R and D. How we can find the relation between R and D that is available in equation number one? So we can say that from equation number one. R is equal to K T. Now we need to put only the value of K here. R is equal to 5 by K T. <coughs> this is the relation between R and T. We can say that R is equal to 5 by 8 times the T. Now part D is Find the value of R if T is equal to 64. We need to find the value of R just from this equation or this equation. You can say that from equation 1. R is equal to K T. We need to find the value of R just to have the values of T and the value of T. The value of K is. 5 by 8 and the value of t that is available 64. So easily we can find it. 8 1 is 8, 8 8 is 64. So 5 by 8 by 8 that is 40. This is the value of r. Now the C part of this question, the last thing is to find the value of T when R is equal to 20. We need to find the value of T <clears throat> again from the solution R is equal to T and T. Now the value of R here is 20. The value of k is 5 by 8, and we need to find the value of t. 8 is divided, and we're going to multiply here. And 5 we're going to divide here. So t is equal to 20 multiplied by 8 divided by 5. Now solve it. 5 ones are 5, 5 fours are 20. So or it's a 32. Then T will be 32. These are simple questions according to directly proportion and inversely proportion. <clears throat> question number four and question number five is again the same question. Just the difference between question number three and four is in question number four, T, T contains the square. R is directly proportional to square. So you just need to solve it according to the square. Now we are going to solve the question number five. The relation here is if B is directly proportional to R Q and B is equal to 5 and R is equal to T. Now you need to find the value of K for me. You can write this thing as B is equal to K R Q. This is equation number 1. You can easily find the value of K from here. B is equal to 5. 
and r is equal to 3. 3 q means 27. So 5 is equal to k into 27. 27 we are going to divide here. So 5 divided by 27 is equal to k. And that is only the value of k. Now, When R is equal to, uh, okay, can find the value of R? We need to find the value of R. The remaining part of question number five is all we just need to find out with R when V is equal to 625. Now you can easily solve and find the value of R. We have the solution that is Z is equal to K R Q. The value of V is 625. The value of K is 5 by 27. And R Q. 27 is dividing here and we're going to multiply on the other side and 5 is multiplied there and we're going to divide here. So we can write this thing as 27 multiplied by 625. And 5 is going to divide here. That is equal to RQ. Now be carefully according to this situation. 5 months are 5. 5 months are 5, 5 2 are 10, 5, 5 are 25. So RQ is equal to 27 multiplied by 125. 27 multiplied by 125. You know that R is cube of 3 because R. This R uh, contains cube 27 is also cube of 3. 125 is also cube of 5. So we can write it as 3 cube multiplied 5 cube. Or easily we can write it as R cube is equal to 3 multiplied by 5 whole cube. We can apply the combined power 3 because this is the case of multiplication. In multiplication we can easily do this. Or we can write it as 3 pi of 15 cube. This is R cube and this is 15 cube. We don't need to find the value of R cube but we need to find the value of R. So this is cube. We need to remove this cube so we will apply here apply Q root on both sides. So apply it R Q is equal to 15 Q. This 3 will cancel to this 3, this 3 will cancel to this 3. So the value of R here is Solves question number five that is relevant to the IP proportion. Now, for question number six, again, is the same thing just like we have done in question number five. Now, we will discuss about question number seven. Inversely arrays. Now, this is a case of inversely proportional. So, you need to be very careful while reading these questions. Varies inversely. Meaning to say, we can write it as y inversely proportional to x. And y is equal to 7. And x is equal to 2. For only this part of this question, we can easily find the value of k. You 
can write it as y is equal to a power x. This is the equation of the one. Therefore, these values y is equal to seven. A power x is equal to two. Two is dividing here, and we are going to multiply here. So k is equal to two multiplied by seven. That is forty. So we have done the the value of k. Now the remaining part of this question number seven is find the value of y when x is equal to one twenty six. The solution is y is equal to k over x. The value of k is fourteen, and the value of x given is one twenty six. Now divide them. Is the table of two to seven to fourteen, two six to twelve, two three to six again seven one to seven seven nine to sixty three. So the value of y we have that is one over nine, and that's it. This was the question number seven. Question number eight is the same thing. Question number nine is the same thing also, but although. We can solve this. Question <clears throat> number nine. There it is. If the view is inversely proportional to. Z, or we can say that W is equal to K over Z. Now we need to find the value of K. So W is equal to five, and Z is equal to seven. For these values, we can easily find the value of K by putting these values into it. Five is equal to K over. Seven. Seven will be to multiply there. Seven times are thirty-five. This is the value of k. Now, just we need to find the value of w and z is equal to one seventy-five over four. We can easily find this value of w from through this relation. We have w is equal to k over z. The value of k is thirty-five, and the value of z is one seventy-five divided by four. This four will go to multiply here, divided by one seventy-five. Now solve it. Five seven the thirty-five. Five three the fifteen, and five five the twenty-five. Again, seven one the seven, seven five the thirty-five. So you are left with W is equal to four over five. This was the value of W, and this was question number nine. Question number ten, question number eleven, question number twelve, and question number thirteen are again the same questions. We are going to solve a question number thirteen here. Again, for the mercy of question, if M is directly proportional to one over M two, and M is equal to two, and M is equal to four, just for this part of this question. We can easily find the value of k. So we can make the relation m is equal to k over m two. This is equation number one. So the value of m is two. K over n value is four. But this n contains q. Four q is Four fours are sixteen. Sixteen fours are sixty-four. 
This 64 will be able to multiply by this too. So k is equal to y by d k. So we are done with this value of k. Now find the value of m if m is equal to 6. m is equal to k over m k. Put all these values in it. So we can say that m is equal to 128. 128 is the value of k. And m cube, the value of m is 4. 4 cubes. Because this m contains q. The value of m here is 6. So we can say that 6 cube. So 128 comma 6 cube means 6 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 6. That makes it 2, 1, 6. Now you can easily solve this. 2, 6 are 12, 2, 4 are 8, 2, 1 are 2, 1, 0, 8. So m is equal to 64 over 1, 0, 8. Now again you can solve this. 4, 1 are 4. 4 6 are 24, then 4 2 are 8, 4 7 are 28. So we are left with m is equal to 16 over 27. This was the value of m. Now the last part of this question is we need to find the value of m. And if you are given with the value of m, that is 432. So the relation is m is equal to k over m q. We have the value of m, that is, or just we need to find the value of m q so we can reach upon these values. m q will be here and m, m will be here n cube is equal to k over m. Now, the value of k we have already, that is 128. <coughs> and the value of m, that is 432. Cross on them. 2, 6 are 12. 2, 4 are 8. 2, 2 are 4. 2, 1 are 2. N to 6 at 12. So N cube is equal to 64 over 216. Now you can see that this is N cube and this must be also some cube and this is also some cube. N cube is equal to, we can write it as 64 is cube of 4 and 216 is cube of 6. Or we can say that 4 over 6 whole cube. We can apply the combined power because this is the case of division. In case of multiplication and in case of division, we can do this. We can apply the combined power. So this is Q and this is Q. We need to remove this Q. So by applying. Cube root on both sides. So we will apply the cube root and also cube root on there. This cube will cancel this cube root and this cube will also cancel the this cube root. So the value of n is 4 over 6. Or we can say that this is 4 and this is 6. 2 to the 4 and 2 to the 6. So our final answer is n is equal to 2 divided by 3. Now this is this was the last part of exercise 3.2. These are very really simple questions according to uh, the criteria, just like various directly proportional and inversely proportional. Just you need to find the value of k firstly and then you need to make the relation between these quantities 
and you can easily find the value of variable which is required. For proportion, there are so many relations. After that, we will discuss the third proportion, what will be the fourth proportion, what is continuous proportion, what is mean proportion, and what is continuous proportion, and there are some theorems on also the proportion. So this was your exercise 3.2. There are many questions which are just like these questions. You need to uh, solve it by yourself. So for today, this was your exercise 3.2 completely. Now, if you have any question regarding today's lecture or any previous lecture, you can ask it now. Thank you.